All right, hey everybody, we are back. We're gonna make a video here. We have Pat Kelly here, and he's gonna to talk to us a little bit about his amazing bow and some of the stuff he's using. He's down here on a hog hunt for a week, and uh, he's brought some pretty unique equipment. Let's see what he's got to show here for us. So how's it going, Pat? It's going well. It's a little warm, but we're in the shade, so not too bad. Um, so I do have a bow here that I've, I've been shooting for a little while. I've killed some several hogs and deer with it. And um, it's a bow that was probably made in the, either the late 1950s or early 1960s, because that's the only time they made it. It's an all fiberglass bow, uh, Paul Bunyan Model 100. And this one's about 50 pounds at my draw. Um, and it's got a fast flight string on it. Basically a bulletproof bow. You could chuck it, do whatever. Some people use them for bow fishing, but I've been lucky enough to have some opportunities to kill some four-legged critters with it. And one of the great things about it is it's you can shoot it right-handed and left-handed. It's got a dual shelf. Um, I just okay. put some Velcro and moleskin on it, just to, why, whatever. But um, yeah, um, when I first got the bow, I shot it. Uh, I shot a nice hog with it in Oklahoma and kind of hung it up on the rack. And then I had an injury to my ring finger, I tore a tendon, so I needed something to shoot right-handed, and I didn't have anything else at the time. So I started shooting this, and I shot this a lot last year, um, and now I had surgery on my right shoulder, So, um, and this finger's recovered, so now I'm shooting this bow left-handed, um, although I can shoot it both hands. I've killed stuff with it both right-handed and left-handed. One of the it's really quiet and it's underrated as far as performance goes. It's sure it's going to be a little slower than a laminated fiberglass back bow, but by the time you get the fast flight string on it, I don't think the drift difference is that dramatic. And they're really underrated. You can usually pick these up for under a hundred dollars, sometimes under a hundred dollars shipped. And uh, I probably paid 50 for this. I'm not sure. And it's just a rugged bow that you can do. In fact, I'm thinking about taking it with me when I go on a moose hunt, either as a primary or backup hunt. And indestructible, uh, yeah, indestructible, it's basically indestructible, quiet. And I <laughs> got a little uh, engineering here. I put a tie wrap on for a bow sight, and uh, there's even glow in the dark tape there because black on black, if you're hunting pigs at night, can be a problem. Um, I don't need that. Um, but it really helps me focus. This bow's one thing, the bow is really lightweight and it helps you keep your form when you have a reference point for holding on your target. That being said, I shoot it right handed and I just gun barrel it down the arrow and it shoots just fine. Now, keep in mind too, um, how many other bows do you think you got, Pat? How many custom bows do you think you have? 30 ish. 30 ish custom bows. And here he is on a trip 30 hours from his house and he is using Paul Bunyan. Okay, it says something there. Like I said, there's a lot of power in these bows, and I've shot this bow. This bow shoots butter smooth. It is amazing. Look at the tips on the knock tips on it or knocks on this thing. How how cool is this? Look at the quality of this thing. We're just gonna scroll you down through this thing. Double shelf, both sides, right or left handed. And this is how old? probably was made like say 1958 to 1960 in that ballpark and still kicking like crazy like i said as durable as they get pretty awesome setup and like i said from somebody who's got over 30 custom bows some of them stretching into some massive amounts of money and this is what he's choosing to take and you've killed every animal this year with this bow correct that's right yeah Yep. Yeah. Pretty awesome. And then now, um, as far as, uh, your arrow here, check, I'm going to have you show them this. I'm going to take your bow from you if you want. We'll set this here. But, um, and this thing is, look at the, this thing is so nice. I mean, it just, like I said, we were talking about it while we were out there hunting. The durability of this thing, this thing will never delaminate. It'll never break. It'll never crack. It'll never, there's just, this thing is a absolute tank beast of a bow. Absolutely awesome. Uh, and the arrows that I'm using are just, um, you know, you can buy these arrows. Actually, there's still blood on it from the last pig I killed. But um, this is a Black Eagle Vintage 500 spine. That, that bow is not cut to center or anything, so it needs a little lighter spine. Um, this is a top hat um, stumping head. They don't make them anymore, I don't believe. And at least I couldn't find them online. But, you know, judo tips are like 125 to 135 grains, I want to say. This is um, 165, 175 grains, so it matches up a little better with more of the uh, hunting heads that I use. And it's just weed whacker line that's crimped down in here. And you can have it either projecting out like this in three, like a clover leaf almost, or you can have six individual 
parts out in a phase break, you just replace it with more weed whacker line. And this just doesn't get stuck under the ground at all. I mean, there's no chance. It whistles a little bit in the air, but that's okay. And um, yeah, that's the air. I do have a lit knock there, but um, which is nice for stump shooting too, if stuff gets buried in the mud or whatever, or underneath brush. But yeah, that's my stump and arrow, which is basically the same as I'm using for hunting, except I've got broadheads on it. So that's really it. And now before we get into his quiver here too, he's got a really unique way of checking his brace height and carrying <laughs> his bow. It's pretty interesting. Like when you t stop and look behind you and he's walking up behind you, he'll often have this, but I'm going to have him show you how he does that with his bow. Let me take your arrow for you. Well, you know, everybody's, some people are a little more finicky about stuff than I am, um, but I don't really like a low brace height on a bow. One of my criteria for how I'm going to set up my bow for hunting is that I can do this and walk around sometimes. I'm dragging an animal behind me or whatever. You gotta do anything and I don't wanna set my bow down. I walk it or if my arms are getting tired for that matter, I'm walking through the woods and I don't got a lot of brush. Walking a road on the way out. Three walking times today, it. three times in the swamp, I turned around and looked at him, he looked just like that. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take long to get it off you. And uh, you know, that's, yeah, it's, that's kinda how, I, yeah, some people will use the fletching and stuff, but I can kinda just tell that it's about where I want it. If it's a half inch too long, no biggie. And as long as it's as long as it's not so short that I can't do this, that's what matters. That's, that's my yeah. criteria. Yep. yep. Do you feel it hit your uh, arm if you go too low? Oh, not really. See, I, that's when I know it. That's I mean, when I know mine's too I mean, low. If I got it really low, I suppose um, I'm not the world's greatest shot, probably. But I think you, the higher the brace height, I think the easier it is for that arrow to get off the shelf. Yeah, cleanly. So I, I personally, me, I would rather have a longer brace height than a shorter brace height. Yep. Um, I think it usually, typically, it quiets the bow down some too. When you have a little, you're gonna have a little more tension at brace height. But that's just my personal preference. So. Yep. Now before I give you your quiver, since you got your glove on, let's see you shoot this dude once. Oh, you... No, we don't. We're not gonna see where you're shooting. I want to focus on you shooting it, oh, so okay. we can see this thing. Well, I'm gonna shoot this left-handed. Bear in mind, whatever I do hurts, but. Um, so yeah, it's not it's not complicated. It draws like any other bow. Look at a, look at a bend in that. That was just perfect. That bow was just so sweet. Such a sweet bow. Oh look, he hit that exact piece of speck of dirt he was aiming yeah. at you. <laughs> I can shoot it right-handed too. That's the beauty of it. So. Yep, goes both ways. All right, now we got to talk about this quiver setup here because he did something pretty cool on here too. Like I said, just interesting things that you're making happen here. Oh. Um, yeah, this is just a old G Fred Asbel quiver. They don't make that anymore, do they? Or do they still? I'm not sure if they make this. I think they may make this quiver, but I'm not positive. It was originally the Delta, I think, correct? I was think it? so too. Yeah, yeah, it was a Delta quiver. And it, so, so, so if you guys don't know, this is actually a seven arrow quiver. Yeah. When you look at the gripper count on this. Yeah, two back here and then five on the front. Yeah, it's a seven arrow quiver. Grew in a uh, black widow used to sell this delta did and you'd put it right on your bow and mount it right on your black widow bow and then uh fred asbel came out with this rig here to be able to run it as a uh, hip or uh shoulder quiver so the only problem for me with this quiver well there's a couple things i've done but this this um bracket was designed to take a little bit larger diameter wood arrow so i just run some rubber bands through to take up some of the slack so they don't get loose on you and that that works like a gem but they only put foam down to about that level it's just a really thin layer of foam with little detents so the arrows don't really stick in it so much i mean if it had another one of these brackets it would probably hold it in tight but it really wasn't the arrows just a little jostling and they would be tearing through that foam so what i did was i took a little bit of pipe insulation and i just cut a couple pieces you can see they're kind of and then i unfolded them and just squeezed them in there and uh Works fine. The arrows are not going anywhere. They're not twisting or anything. And I don't know. You don't need to spend a lot of high dollars to fix a problem, I don't think. So now, what broadheads are you shooting in there? I've got two choices. Um, since I'm hunting piggies, I've got, I like a, bro a wider broadhead, but I do have a, two of these, which are much narrower than I normally would shoot, but these are the, the RMS gear cutthroats. They're really sharp. And I, there's a particular bore I thought I might run into, which is probably pushing about 350 pounds. I was hoping to run into him um, in Oklahoma, and I didn't. So 
I didn't uh, use those broadheads. Well, the one I did use, I don't know which, which arrow it is here. Um, probably this one. Did I, no, I had a lit knock on it. I think it was this one. And this is a um, one and a quarter inch VPA three blade. This is, yeah, this is definitely the broadhead that I killed the pig with. And um, pretty decent bore, probably 225, 250. And uh, yeah, you can see there's little speckles of blood that I didn't do a great job of <laughs> cleaning off there. Now, but what's your total arrow weight? I want to say, I think when I shoot, I have a longer draw length right handed, so I was shooting 200 grains with those, but I'm shooting 250s left handed. So it's probably going to be close to 600 uh, grains with the 250s, probably pushing 600 grains as this is right here. And the bow's 50 at your draw length. 50, 51, yeah. Yep. Yeah, but they, it smokes an arrow. I mean, like... Oh, for sure, with your 30-inch yeah, your thirty mean, inch power stroke on there, too. Like, like if I... We'll, we'll see. Like, if I'll, I'll put that... Even though I tore up that head a little bit, I'll draw it right here. Oh, you did pop it back out, huh? Right now, I'm going to have to <laughs> loosen that up and tighten it up, but... Just, I'm just going to draw it, but like right-handed, and this is going to hurt a bit because of my shoulder, but you can see like when I draw right-handed, and it's got, it, it really... Point, point that way, just from the fake, for the shade, there we go. So when I draw it right-handed, that arrow's about 31 inches, so it's really going to smoke it, so... Laying right there, yeah, I see yeah. it. So. Yeah, but yeah, you got, you got a lot of power stroke in there. I mean, that thing's shooting, and that bow bends so pretty. When, when you draw this thing, the bend of that and the way those limb tips open up, I mean, that is such a pretty, pretty bow. I, I, I love this thing. And like I said, tough as nails. Tough as nails. And what's the length of that, total length? It's supposed to be either 50. Uh, if you look on their old paperwork, it's either 59 or 60 inches. Um, I think it's 60 inches long. But, you know, it's got... For most of those older fiberglass bows, they were more in a longbow shape or, or with just the tips flipped a little bit. This has a lot more recurve to a it. Lot, a lot more curve to it. I find it, of all the fiberglass bows that I've shot, I think this model, the Paul Bunyan 100, is the smoothest of them for, for a longer draw length. Uh, the 300 that I have, a three model 300, that's also really nice, but it's 63 or 65 inches long. And it really only has the tips flipped, and this one shoots much nicer at my draw length than that one does. So, very nice, love it. Anything you want to add in? No, I think that's probably it. Well, there you go. And like I said, take it from a guy who's got 30 custom bows, and he's on an out-of-state trip, 30 hours from his house on a pretty big hunt here with a few different people. Um, he's hunting with me. He's hunting with Robert. He's hunting with uh, other people that are down here. He's on a week long, and he was in Oklahoma and killed a hog, but he's down here on a pretty major hunt. And this is the bow he, chooses, he chose to take out of all those. And he's talking about he's got a moose tag. He's going up moose hunting, and he's thinking about that being the one he's going to kill moose with, too. So, uh, point being here that you want to take into consideration is don't think you got to go buy anything custom or fancy or anything like that. There, every bow out there today has got pros and cons, and this one has a heck of a lot going for it. And you can usually find these things at a garage sale for 40 bucks. Uh, so don't rule them out. And like I said, they got a lot of there's a lot of pros to them for sure. So, as always, thanks for watching, and uh, Patrick, thanks for being here with us.